your goal here is to put our best foot forward. We want to take steps that other applicants are not taking just to make sure we win. Hello everyone, I'm Mathias Fagrami, a second year PhD student at the University of Oxford. And in this video, we'll be going through steps you should consider taking before sending off the application. Let's see the bigger picture here. It's not just about getting into any PhD program, but it's also about making it through the program. When you send off the application, you're essentially saying you're happy to spend the next three plus years of your life independently researching on the topic within a field. This means even when things don't work, your interest in the project does not fade. Another reason why we genuinely need to identify our interests is because when we make it to the interview stages, the interviewers will try to probe our interest in that field and we're left to convince them that we're the right person for the job. Now that we've identified our interests, it's time to find out who offers PhD programs in those subjects. The first three steps are pretty basic. The first is to identify a database of PhD projects. For example, findaphd.com, which is the world's largest database of PhD projects. Or if you're applying to an institution in the UK, jobs.ac.uk forward slash PhD. The next step is to search for your project of interest, of course. And the third step is the most critical one, which is to identify trends. When we look through these databases, we we'll find that certain institutions would have more PhD projects in a particular field than they do for others. For example, we can see here that the University of Manchester has more projects in neuroscience than most other universities. The next step is to go directly to the department or the institute's website and find all available PhD projects they have in that field. Why is this? Not every supervisor posts their PhD project on these databases. And so if we want to beat the competition, we need to start looking at places that other people are not going to look at. Once you identify this trend, we'll go straight to the Institute's website and find all available PhD programs. And the reason for this is because in the useful links or more information, the Institute will tend to post similar projects to the ones you're currently looking at. And so if you've missed out on certain projects because of the keywords, that's an opportunity to find them. For example, if you search for cancer biology, you might miss out on certain projects because the Institute might have a molecular cell biology course where they then offer cancer biology projects. So this is why we need to go directly to the source to find out more projects. No matter how streamlined the application process at a particular institution is, it is always a great idea to have your name in front of the supervisor before sending off the application. Remember, the goal here is to put your best foot forward. The goal here is to beat the competition. The goal here is to use your unfair advantage. I recommend reaching out to supervisors via email. Four key things that needs to follow through with that email. The first is the supervisor's name. Never send out a generic email to a supervisor. Don't just say, dear Sarama. The chances that your email will get ignored is probably 100%. The second thing is you want to show genuine interest in the project. So mention the name of the project as advertised and say something about you that expresses your interest in the project. The third is to attach your CV and the fourth is to attach your undergraduate transcript. Before we go to step number four, here is a little twist to step number three. So far, we've only reached out to supervisors who have advertised projects on the website. But the goal here is to find an unfair advantage put the best foot forward and beat the competition. So we will be reaching out to supervisors who have not advertised projects on the website. This single trick is responsible for 90% of the PhD offers I received. When supervisors do not advertise PhD projects, it does not necessarily mean that they do not have a space for a PhD student in the lab. This is the third door to getting into a PhD program. Since we've already identified institutes that offer PhD programs that we're interested in, it's now time to find supervisors within that institute that do not have advertised PhD programs. The major difference between reaching out supervisors that have advertised their PhD project and supervisors that do not have any advertised project is that in the latter, you need to have a stronger case to convince them to want you. And to do this, you need to read up on their lab and on their project. When sending out that email, you want to make sure you have two or three sentences that genuinely shows you have interest in the project. For this, we need to do a bit more work. I found three publications from the lab, two reviews to have a general understanding of what exactly the lab does and one primary paper. And so when sending out the email to supervisors that do not have an advertised project, I align my interest in the lab to things I have read from the paper. And in certain cases, I also reference the papers they did. Now, you do not need to have an extensive understanding of what's going on in the lab. At the end of the day, we might not get a reply. So you just want to have a basic understanding of what's going on. Pick out one or two things you can reference to in the email. The goal here is to get the supervisor's attention. I know this is extra work, but it's a third door to get in PhD offers. 
Most PhD projects come with a particular type of funding tied to it, but I have put funding as step number four because of word of mouth. As an international student, I understand the limitations that comes with trying to find a funded PhD project, but one way to get through this and get around this is word of mouth. Do not underestimate how much talking about why you need to get funded can help you. I've had supervisors, PhD students, research assistants point me in directions of funding that I would have never heard of if I did not speak up about the struggle I had with funding. And so never underestimate the value of word of mouth. Keep talking about why you need to get funded and someone will be able to direct you to a position that would increase the chances of getting a funded PhD project. Step number five is breathe. This is a marathon and not a sprint. When applying for PhD programs, just think of the iceberg of success. There's so much groundwork that needs to be done to increase your chances of getting a PhD offer. So with every rejection or ignored email, just think it's another layer closer to going above the water. So just remember to breathe and remember it's a marathon and not a sprint. That wraps up the steps you should consider taking before sending off that PhD application. If you also have any self queries and questions, feel free to reach out in the comments below or via my social media handles or my email. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next video.